Hey, what's up guys? JB here. Now, one of the more commonly misunderstood things in War of the Visions is cast time. And not only cast time, but how the various interactions work in terms of exactly how long your cast is going to take and the impact of the various cast time reductions via passives and active abilities that are present in the game today. Now, this is actually what I consider foundational knowledge for the manual player, and it's something that I know very, very well. However, because much of this is actually happening transparently to the auto player, with no actual feedback being given to you in game, in my experience, the lack of understanding is even more pronounced to the auto player. And you know, we're now in an age of the game where there are many options available to us in terms of reducing and lowering our casting speed, whether it's innately via unit passives and masteries, through vision cards or espers, or even trust stones and TMRs. So I do believe it's important for everyone to understand exactly how this works and to fully grasp what the tangible benefits are to you when you equip and layer these various casting reduction options. So today I wanted to try and break all that down visually so you can have that knowledge moving forward and make more informed team building decisions. So let's just get right into it. And the first thing that I want to quickly touch on is sort of the relationship between CT and casting time. And these mechanics both operate on sort of a cycle or clock tick system. And that's all happening transparently behind the scenes. But essentially is how the game is determining the turn order and what actions are happening when in real time. Now keep in mind that the cast time scale of course is only going to be invoked when you cast a spell or even use certain missile or jump abilities. And whereas the CT bar is always filling up incrementally based on your agility value, your cast time bar is only filling Filled up based on the actual casting speed of the particular skill that you're using. So these bars fill completely independently of one another based on their own factors and are not directly linked, you know, outside of operating on that clocking or tick cycle system where the game is checking in periodically on those various statistics and gradually filling up those bars block by block based on the unit's stat values. Now specifically, the cast time bar operates on a 0 to 1000 scale and where Whereas the CT bar requires 100 CT for you to take your turn, the cast time bar needs to reach 1000 before your spell or action is actually resolved and sent out in the game. Now any skill or ability that needs to actually invoke this cast time bar has its own inherent cast speed value, and those range anywhere from 200 to 360 in value, with the higher number actually representing a quicker casting ability. Now skills can actually have a cast speed lower than 200, but for the purpose of this discussion, I'm assuming that we're dealing with maximum level skills. Now that's a very high level explanation, but there are other factors that can actually impact this cast time. So let's actually look at some examples and see exactly how it works. And in our example, we're going to look at Black Rose Helena. And let's look specifically at Helena's slowest casting spell, which is Black Rose Judgment. And you can see here in the graphic, this is a 200 cast speed. So again, that's the lowest possible value. Now I've pulled this information here on the screen from the Votiv Calc website, but you are able to see the casting speed in game as well. And that's on the skill info screen. Now again, in order to actually resolve and cast this spell in battle, we have to reach that 1000 cast time and fill up our bar. So let me show you exactly why this 200 is going to be the slowest possible spell. And for the purpose of this first example, we're going to assume Helena currently has no cast time reduction available to her. And we can see here, tick one is happening. 200 is actually filled into the bar. So we've reached 200 out of a potential 1000 cast time. So as you can see here, as the ticks are happening in game behind the scenes, essentially we're filling up 200 or 20% for each game tick or clock cycle that happens until we get up to that 1000. And then that spell is actually going to be sent out in game. Now, real rough math here, guys, but you know, making an assumption that units on the battlefield are generally in the vicinity of 100 to you know roughly 120 agility, we're looking at approximately 50 to 60 of in-game CT actually transpiring before this ability can actually be sent out and resolve. And that's actually a pretty significant amount of time. That's essentially half a turn or more, and a lot can happen in that window. You know, obviously the opponent may have a chance to actually move and kill you or shut down the cast of your spell. And in fact, the auto AI will shy away and not use slower or potentially more damaging spells if the opponent is going to be able to move before you can finish casting it. So this is really where the importance of the skill time reduction mechanic can come in and be seen and potentially make a very big impact. So let's talk a little bit more about how that works. 
And first in Helena's case, she actually has a passive ability which reduces her skill activation or cast time by 200. So what this does is this actually is truncating your casting time bar by 20%. So whereas she needed to reach 1000 cast time initially, we now actually only need to reach 800 as you can see here on the screen. But let's continue with this though. And you know, Helena also has an active ability with the Earth skill Darkened Focus that can actually get her another 350 skill activation decrease. So here, as we can see, you know, we're going to get another 35% reduction in her cast time bar. So we're now going down to a cast time bar that caps out at only 450. So a total reduction of 55% or 550. So let's go back and look at that spell example again, now with these reductions in place and see what the actual in-game impact is going to be. So again here, we're looking at that Black Rose Judgment ability with that 200 casting speed. And I really want to stress the difference here between cast time, which is your skill action bar and cast speed, which is how quickly you're going to actually fill up that bar. So with that 550 or 55% reduction that we now have in play, the magic number we're trying to hit now is that 450 value. So you can see here, tick one, again, we're going to be at 200 and that's always going to be static, you know, regardless of how much actual cast time reduction that we have. Tick two is now going to come in. We're now at 400. Very, very close, right? We, you know, we didn't quite make it to that 450 number on this tick. So we do actually have to wait for another another in-game tick or clock cycle to happen before we're actually going to actually get this spell off. And this is actually a very important point to understand. You know, when you're equipping or invoking various cast time reductions, it is possible that, you know, when you're stacking different reductions onto your unit, that it may not actually make any tangible difference, you know, depending on what the cast speed of the spell is and how much reductions you've actually accrued on your unit. So definitely something to pay close attention to and, you know, do when you're doing your team building or theory crafting of your team. All right, so tick three comes out and you see we hit that 450 number. And so as you can see here, this skill has gone from a five tick cast, which we said, you know, rough math was a 50 to 60 CT of in-game time. And we've now reduced that to a three tick cast, which will be roughly 30 to 36 CT of game time. So we've shortened that window where we could be interrupted or killed significantly just from that passive and active cast time reduction that we have equipped. Now with the advent of trust stones, you know, we do have access to another very easy way to further reduce our cast time by another 25%. Now one note on that is that that particular passive is only applied to attacking spells. Any casted buffs or heals wouldn't be impacted by this source of skill activation reduction. But as you can see here, you know, we're now at an 800 total reduction or 80%. So that cast time bar is now at just a 200 cap. You know, we've gone down from that 1000 ceiling down to just 200, which is very, very significant. So let's throw this back into our example and we'll take another look at it. Okay, so going back to our Black Rose Judgment spell here, and you can see we have the 800 total reduction applied. So again, that ceiling we're trying to reach to cast our spell is just 200. So one tick is gonna go by and we're gonna send out our spell. So we have what we call one tick casting here. And this 800 total cast time reduction is essentially the magic number, you know, for several reasons. You know, one, if you're able to actually achieve that 800 cast time reduction, any and all of your spells are going to take just a single in-game tick to be sent out. You know, as we said, the slowest possible cast time in the game is only 200. Two, you know, while this isn't technically instant cast, you know, 10 to 12 CT of in-game time will actually transpire. The important note here though is that your spells or skills actually resolve first before any unit who's set to take their turn on that same game or clock tick. So for all intents and purposes, you know, it is effectively an instant cast when you reach this one tick cast window. The only situation where it wouldn't actually happen would be as if somebody was actually on 100 CT on the same game tick where you actually selected and cast your spell. And that's usually pretty unlikely, but you know, it can actually happen. Okay, so that was a 200 cast speed spell that we've been looking at here this whole time. But to sort of just take this home and really cement the idea, you know, why don't we just take a look at just one more example. And let's look at Black Rose's Dark 2 ability. And in this particular example here, we're going to assume that her active, you know, darkened focus buff for that additional 35 reduction has now worn off, you know, or maybe she just didn't have a chance to cast it. So we're now at that 450 value or 4 
45% cast time reduction, meaning that we need to hit 550 on our cast time bar for our spell to be sent out in resolve. And as you can see here, you know, Dark 2 has a 280 inherent cast speed. So actually this one is a little bit faster than the Black Rose Judgment spell that we have been looking at. All right, so in game tick one's gonna happen. We're gonna fill up 280 out of the 550 that we need. Tick two is gonna come in. We've hit that 550 value and the spell is gonna be sent out. So with this 450 reduction, you know, we have a two tick casting window on this particular spell. I just kind of wanted to show this alternate example with a different level of reduction with a different casting speed on our spell so that, you know, you can sort of take this information and apply it to your own units. You know, every unit is going to have access to different levels of reductions that they have, you know, depending on what they have innately and, and what you actually equip on them in terms of VCs, TMRs, espers, you know, all that stuff. But I think, you know, using the principles that we've looked at here and, and this information, you should be able to apply it now yourself and have a very good understanding and, and, and be equipped to actually utilize this, you know, during your team building. All right, so that's cast time explained. I really tried my hardest here to sort of break this mechanic down and, and sort of make it easy to understand. And I hope I was able to achieve that for you guys here today. Now, as I was sort of saying at the start of the video, I, I do believe this is sort of a foundational topic for the manual player to understand. But again, I, I do believe it's also very important for the auto player to understand as well, to really harness and, and sort of get the, the, the most power and bang for your buck out of your units that are utilizing this mechanic in the game. So let me know in the comments, guys, you know, how did I do? You know, did you learn something today? And are there other in-game mechanics that you want to see me break down? You know, if so, let me know what those are. If you enjoyed this video, you know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, help us grow and be notified of my future videos. And that's really all I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there and I'll see you guys in the next one.